What's up, design family, and welcome back to another episode of FitBite, the mini series on the Fit Design podcast where we take bite sized pieces of fit design, fashion, and sportswear design content that you love and break them down into easy to understand bite sized pieces. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the complete shoe overview. We'll be looking at the main components of shoes and outlining what the functions of these components are, as well as providing you guys easy to understand common materials to be using on each of these components. Shoe design can be quite a complicated world, and this quick fit bite episode is designed to give you the introduction you need to understand shoe components and common materials. In order to truly understand the shoe design world, we'll look at the main components of a traditional shoe. We'll evaluate the function of each of these components as well as look at some of the common materials. We'll start off with one of the most common components of a shoe, and that's the shoelace. This is an extremely common fastening component that is used on pretty much every shoe style imaginable. Obviously, there are other components that can allow you to do the same thing, but A shoelace is implemented quite often because of its low cost and its adaptability. Some common materials for shoelaces are leather, woven fabric, polypropylene ropes, and webbing. Next, we'll look at one of the most prominent components of the shoe, and this is known as the upper. The upper essentially holds the shoe onto the foot. It's the strap that holds everything down. The upper is connected to the sole or the base of the shoe, typically using a strip of leather, rubber, or plastic that's stitched between it and the sole. This is sometimes known as a welt. Some common materials that are used on uppers are calf, hide, heavyweight woven fabrics are quite common in sportswear shoes like cotton, linen, canvas, polybag, neoprene is sometimes used especially on your styles, and lycra or spandex, which gives these textiles the stretch they need. Once we've established our upper, we then need our lining. The lining is the component of the shoe that covers the inside seams of the shoe. Linings are typically made out of functional materials that help wick sweat away, that add additional padding, and enhance the overall customer experience. Some common materials that are used are sheepskin, pigskin, or in the sake of sportswear items, usually we're looking at synthetic materials that help wick sweat away, prevent odor, and just enhance the comfort of the wearer. A shoe shape is very distinctive, and it gives it its characteristic. So the toe puff and the heel stiffener are key components that allow a shoe to retain its shape. Some common materials that are used for these components are thermoplastics, fiberboard with an adhesive coating. Usually you want to use items that are lightweight, heavily resistant to stretch and wear and tear, and ultimately will help retain the shoe's shape over a long period of time. Next, we have our insole. The significance of the insole cannot be understated. This is pretty much where your foot rests 100% of the time, and the insole is essentially attached to the lasting margin of the upper. This is wrapped around the last during the closing of the shoe, during the lasting operation itself. Some common materials are leather on more luxury items, and then fiberboard on more commonplace and sportswear items. Alongside the insole, we'll consider the shank. Together with the insole, the shank provides the foundation of every shoe. It helps to strengthen the shoe between the back and the joint. Some common materials that we see used for shanks are wood, if we have a low heel shoe, fiberboard as well with a low heel shoe, and a fluted steel if we have something that requires a little bit more structure, such as a high heel shoe. For sportswear items, it's very common to see wood used, especially on powerlifting shoes that require the structure. One component that we see used quite prominently on sportswear shoes that is not used on most other common types of shoes is the midsole. The midsole provides cushioning and shock absorption. Think Nike Air. At the same time, some common materials that are used are typically synthetic. In this case, we use EVA or ethyl vinyl acetate. Moving on, we have our outsole. 
The outsole is the layer that comes in direct contact with the ground. Therefore, it must be both tough, provide friction, and ultimately provide the support necessary. It may comprise of either a single piece, or it may be an assembly of different pieces that create the construction. Also, it's not uncommon to see materials mixed in the outsole. Some common materials that we typically see on outsoles are leather or vegetable tan leather, rubber or rubber cup soles, which is quite common on sportswear items, thermoplastic resins or TPRs, polyurethane or PU, brown polyurethane, wood, and PVC. Cork is also a common option. And lastly, we have the heel. The function of the heel is quite evident. The heel provides support for the heel of the foot. Some common materials we see used on heels are wood, nylon, polycarbonate with steel central core, metal, cork, or perspex. You've just listened to Fitbite episode 7. If you guys enjoyed this episode of Fitbite, please consider leaving a rating below and letting us know what you thought. If you want to see other similar topics in the future, also let us know. We always enjoy hearing from you guys and providing the content that you're looking for. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Fit Design Podcast. Until next episode, stay awesome.